Hi, hello, 안녕, Raymi다, 반갑습니다. Welcome back to my channel, and if you are new, welcome, welcome. My name is Ray, and if you don't know who I am, that is okay because you can find out more about me here on all social media platforms. My skin type is oily, sensitive, reactive, dehydrated, and sometimes it can also be a combination. Today's video is a bit different from my usual skincare reviews. I've partnered with Kosir to test out eight of their skincare products. And because there are so many products to go over today, I thought it will be fun to shake things up a little bit. For this video, I will be comparing two products from two different lines, but of the same category. At the end of each category, I will decide which one is the better product. If that sounds like something you're interested in watching, don't change the channel. First, I want to talk about Kosir's history, since there are a lot of misconceptions about this brand. Let's make it very clear. Kosir is not related to Cosrx. In fact, Kosir's mother company was established in 1979. I would also like to add that Kosir is actually one of the more affordable skincare brands in the market right now. And they focus on using quality ingredients as opposed to making their products super fancy looking. Full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship. Kosir asked me to highlight their product's key points, but as always, I'm going to share my honest opinions on their products. The goal of this channel is to share my skincare reviews with you so that you can shop with confidence. Everything I say in this video is my own opinion, but I've also been provided fact sheets from Kosir to make sure I get their ingredients and product details correct. This is going to be a very long video because we do have eight products. So grab a snack, get comfortable, and let's jump into the world of Kosir. Urikaja. Starting off this review, we have Kosir's cleansers. This one is their ultra hyaluronic cleansing oil, and this one is their green tea pH clear foam cleanser. We are all familiar with hyaluronic acid and green tea on this channel, so there's no need to waste your time. But as a reminder, hyaluronic acid is a powerful humectant that our skin naturally produces to retain moisture and hydration in our skin. And the lack of hyaluronic acid in our skin is actually what leads to fine lines and wrinkles. Green Green tea, of course, is the most popular and gentle antioxidant that is compatible with every skin type. The key difference of these two cleansers is of course one is an oil cleanser and the other is a foam cleanser. The oil cleanser is a great first cleanse since the canola and camellia oil can help break down the oils in makeup and sunscreen or any buildup in your skin. But what makes this cleanser so nice and gentle is that they have rosehip oil in it. Rosehip oil keeps our skin barrier strong so that it can maintain hydration and moisture. The foam cleanser on the other hand is a great second cleanser since it is a water base and can remove any leftover grime. This cleanser also acts as a very gentle chemical exfoliant that melts away blackheads and whiteheads. This cleansing oil is great for dry and dehydrated skin. It has a non-viscous texture that is just slightly thicker than water. Because of that, it's much easier to move this cleanser around your skin. I love how it gently pushes out the sebaceous filament and gunk in my skin without having to try too hard. If you want to use this oil as a second cleanser, you can do so by lathering it up into this thin, watery foam. I enjoy using this foam cleanser in the morning since it is gentle yet refreshing enough to get rid of the impurities that I have built up in my skin overnight. The foam is a bit dense right out of the container, but it lathers up very quickly into a soft foam perfect for oily skin. Both cleansers have a subtle and pleasant fragrance to them. They're also both very gentle on the skin and don't leave your skin with that very tight feeling. Of course, with the oil cleanser, you will get a more nourishing effect as opposed to the foam cleanser. And if I had to pick between these two, I would go with the oil cleanser. Before we move on to the next two sets of product lines, I want to go over the key ingredients of the upcoming lines. EGF is a well-aging ingredient that restores the glow to our skin. So if you're noticing dullness or your skin just looks tired, EGF can help with that. Peptides, on the other hand, increase collagen production in our skin. And collagen is, of course, the key protein in our skin that makes it bouncy and more elastic. As our skin ages, it loses collagen and peptides, so it's important that we restore them topically. Snail mucin is an ingredient that was perfected by South Korean dermatologists and labs. This stretchy and sticky substance is the trail that snails leave behind when they move. And the benefits of this slime is that it strengthens our skin barrier by promoting elasticity. Snail mucin is actually considered cruelty-free in South Korea. 
Korea because snails are kept in comfortable environments so that they can produce healthy trails of nuisance. Lastly, we have black colored superfoods. Lots of East Asians view food that are naturally black as healthy because they happen to contain the highest traces of antioxidants. Black superfoods include black rice, black beans, and black sesame. These superfoods are known to help repair damaged skin cells, rejuvenate our skin, and nourish our skin barrier. Toners can sometimes be the most boring step in our skincare routine, but as long as you know the benefits of your toner, I'm sure you will appreciate this step a little bit more. We have Colsier's EGF Peptide Toner here and their Black Snail Collagen Toner. In terms of user experience, I find that the Black Snail Collagen Toner to be slightly better because it does have a pleasant scent. The Peptide Toner, on the other hand, has more of an alcohol smell to it, and I think some of you might find that a little bit off-putting. The Peptide Toner is non-viscous and very watery compared to the Black Snail Toner which is a bit thicker, but both toners sink into my skin very quickly, so there is no need to fan yourself for these products to dry down. I find that for oily skin types, you would prefer the peptide toner a little bit more, since it does have ingredients like panthenol and ginseng root extract to balance the moisture level in our skin. Dehydrated skin types, however, would prefer the black snail collagen toner, because the snail mucin and the ginseng root extract in this toner really helps produce a greater water binding synergy in the skin. Also, for anyone who needs a boost in antioxidants, the snail toner could help with that as well. Both toners are super hydrating and they promote collagen production, so it's really up to you to decide which one you prefer. The toning step is really meant to prime your skin with hydration for the other products to lay on top of it. Luckily, when I tested both of these toners, it was during the transition period from spring to summer. In spring, I used the black snail toner a lot more, but once we enter summertime, I've been using the peptide toner a lot more. It really came down to the density and finishes of these toners. Both the EGF peptide and the black snail collagen serums are gel type serums. These are viscous and very chunky gels that are not common in serums. Textures aside, the peptide serum is a bit tacky on my skin as a finish, but it's fine because I always apply moisturizer right afterwards, so it doesn't really affect my user experience. This serum also contains allantoin, which is an emollient that soothes our skin and prevents it from being very flaky. In other words, this serum helps hold in moisture and hydration in our skin. I do think that this serum works very well for oily skin types, and maybe combination skin type as well. The Black Snail Collagen Serum actually surprised me because it feels very light on my skin, even though it is a very thick serum. It's also non-sticky and it gives my skin a cooling effect. And I can see this being a great summer serum because of that soothing effect. There's also soybean extract in the serum, which I believe is meant to serve as a natural retinol to speed up skin cell turnover. And I think that this serum is a great choice for dry and sensitive skin. Overall, I think that both serums are great hydration boosters. And they act as collagen communicators to stimulate production. And if you are in need of anti-wrinkle benefits, these serums can do that for you. As for me, I started off loving the Black Snail Collagen Serum, but suddenly I found myself using the Peptide Serum a lot more recently. I think maybe it's because I'm at an age where I gravitate toward peptides a lot more. Choose Using the right moisturizer is important because it can make or break your skincare routine. Luckily, I found that both Cossier's Peptide Cream and Black Snail Cream have powerful moisture locking functions. Both are wonderful moisturizers, but they certainly have their own unique charms. The Peptide Cream focuses more on enhancing the collagen levels in our skin, while the Black Snail Collagen Cream is driven by antioxidants. Both creams are trying to achieve the same goals of well-aging effects. The Peptide Peptide cream feels very much like a water burst cream, super refreshing and light on my skin. The snail cream, on the other hand, is slightly thicker and much stretchier, but it sets in a light and matte finish. It also feels a lot more nourishing because it does have aloe vera and ginseng root extract. Oh, and the stretchy texture is a lot more fun to use. The snail cream comes with a tiny, tiny spatula. Look how small it is. One scoop of this cream using this spatula is enough to cover your entire face. People in their late 20s might prefer the peptide cream a little bit more because it's a very straightforward moisturizer. And while I think all skin types can seriously 
seriously benefit from this snail cream. If you are known to react poorly to silicones, then I would say skip this one. Both moisturizers have really good well-aging benefits and they're both super lightweight. What I love most about these two moisturizers is that they both help rebuild our skin barrier. And that's why we do skincare in the first place. Between the two, I prefer the black snail cream a little bit more. At nighttime, the peptide cream is a solid choice because it's nourishing and light. But during the day, I love using this snail cream because it's matte and it gives my skin a very cooling effect. That is all for this video. We went through a lot of products in this video, so thank you for staying till the very end. Even though this is a paid sponsorship, I am blown away by how well Calcier's products worked on my skin. Thank you to the PR team at Calcier for sending over these products for me to test and making this video possible. Kamsamnida! Sound off in the comments, I would like to know which of these products you are most interested in trying. I will leave all the product links in the down bar below for you guys to check out in case you guys are interested. Please help this channel grow by subscribing and sharing this video with your friends and family. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Until then, be safe, stay hydrated, and most importantly, be gentle with yourself. I mean it. I'm talking to you. You better be gentle. Gentle like snails. Annyeong. Come back for more. To say yo. To say yo. To say yo.